Tooth loss is usually something we associate with old age and not younger people like in their 20s or 30s. But a major study came out that was following young people with gum disease for over a decade. And they found that a certain group of them lost over 10 teeth before they even turned 36. So today I'm gonna to talk about what those researchers really found out and which group is most likely to lose more teeth and what you can do about it. So it's really focusing on gum disease. Now this is really important because a lot of times like patients of mine when I go do their exam and their checkup and they're just finished with the hygienist and getting their teeth cleaned, like there's problems with their gums. Like they have some form of gum disease going on whether it's gingivitis or something more severe. And we're gonna get into the different types of gum disease a little bit. But when I come and I tell them, hey, you don't have any cavities, they just hear like, oh, great news, my teeth are totally fine, like not brushing and not flossing have worked out great for me. And then they totally forget everything we talk about when we say that your gums still have problems. You see, gum disease isn't just like an older person's problem and it's not just like a make-believe thing that if you go to your dentist every six months, it's gonna take care of itself. This study was looking at people under 36 with severe gum disease. In other words, called periodontitis. So you have different levels of gum disease. So the first grade of gum disease is called gingivitis. You've probably heard of it before. Gingivitis is basically inflammation of your gums. So if you're brushing and flossing, but you get like bacteria underneath your gums, or if you're just missing some spots, your gums can start to bleed, or you can have like tartar and gunk built up underneath your gums. And this is the first stage. This is called gingivitis. Now, gingivitis only affects the gums. It doesn't affect anything else. But if gingivitis is left untreated or ignored, it can actually get worse. And this is when it starts turning into periodontitis. Periodontitis affects both the gums and the support structure of the teeth. So it affects the bones and like the attachment of the teeth to the bone. So people with periodontitis, as it gets more severe, can start to lose their bone. They can start to lose bone that holds their teeth in place, and their teeth can get more loose, and then they might end up losing teeth. It's actually the number one cause for people ending up in dentures. Now periodontitis itself has different stages. It goes from like mild periodontitis to severe periodontitis. But periodontitis as a whole should not be ignored because once you lose bone or once you lose attachment from your teeth into your jaw, you'd never get it back. So even like mild periodontitis, you can never get back what you lost. So it's good to correct it as early as possible. So this research was done in Sweden. They were tracking 446 patients for over 10 years. Now the good thing about this data was it wasn't just like people self-reporting like losing their teeth or having gum disease. They were actually using like real reports from dentists. Because in Sweden, dentists are required to like log all their treatments and it's all available. So what they found was overall over these like over 10 years, most people did not lose any teeth that if they did at all. On average, most people lost just about one tooth over the decade. So in other words, it averaged out to 0.12 teeth lost per year. So I know that's kind of confusing. So let's say you took like 100 patients over one year, 12 of them might have lost a tooth. And that might not be from like gum disease, it might be because like they had a really big cavity or they had like a tooth cracked or something, you know, things happen. But a small minority, like 3.6% of the population lost 10 or more teeth. Now this group is where the real problem is. These group of people who lost multiple teeth all had very similar characteristics. They all had generalized periodontitis or generalized like severe gum disease that's affecting like their whole mouth. All of their gum disease was at the level of stage four. That's basically the most advanced level of gum disease that you can get. Also, they were more likely to be smokers. Smoking is a huge risk factor for losing teeth, but it also can make your gum disease worse. Also, this group was usually at a lower education level. And we know with like dental education, it's so important because when people are educated on what happens to their teeth, what happens to their gums if they neglect them, then they tend to actually fix those problems from an early age. And lastly, this group was most likely to drop out of treatment. So instead of actually going through with going to the dentist and getting everything taken care of, they're more likely to just drop out and just ignore whatever the dentist told them to do. That is by far one of the biggest red flags because when we see someone and we know that they need treatment, like let's say they need like a deep cleaning or something because they have like early stage gum disease, but they ignore it then that just leaves a path for that gum disease to just keep getting worse. And that's probably why most of them had that advanced stage 
because when you neglect getting treatment done, then things are just gonna only get worse. Now the patients that did have gum disease but stuck with like active treatment actually did a whole lot better. And it kind of makes sense, right? Like there's a reason that we're telling you to do these things. It's like if you go to any doctor, if you go to like your physical therapist and you're like you just had a car accident but now you're doing your rehab but you quit halfway through because you think you don't need it. Obviously the people that go through with the whole thing are probably gonna end up a whole lot better. But here's the problem, most people simply don't care until it's too late and then they think, hey, why can't you just fix my teeth and then just put a filling on it or just like prevent them from all falling out? Well, no, it's too late. Now, is this study perfect? No, but I actually think it's pretty good. I mean, it's a pretty large sample size and the fact that they're using actual dental records takes away from the bias of people like self-reporting. If someone were to say like, hey, I actually didn't lose any teeth when they're missing half their teeth in their face. And the trends in this study are consistent with multiple other studies in dentistry. Most groups will do totally fine and some people might get lucky and not even end up with severe gum disease. But the group that does, especially the people that have it and then neglect getting treatment done, are gonna be at a total disadvantage advantage. So if you're watching this, what you do? Well, if you haven't been to the dentist in a while, that should be the first step. Make sure you go. Also, make sure you're brushing and flossing your teeth. It's really that simple. And if you want, you can also add a water flosser to your routine. You don't have to do the water flosser every day if you don't want to, but maybe at least once, twice, three times a week, along with your brushing and flossing, that's going to help a ton. But also, if you're going to the dentist and they say you have issues, like they say you have gum disease, or they say you need like an active treatment, like a deep cleaning or something like that, make sure you get it done. If you want to get a second opinion, opinion, fine. But if both opinions are saying the same thing, then they're probably not lying to you. But also, if you are a smoker, and you're also in this group of people who already have gum disease and are neglecting care, you are probably in the most extreme, most dangerous group. That's like the biggest red flag for a patient. And you're basically setting yourself up for losing all of your teeth. And not even that, there's so many other problems that can come with smoking I don't even have to talk about. Like you can get oral cancer or any other type of cancer. But the biggest thing is going early and getting early treatment done if you need it. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below and I will see you in the next video. If you've ever winced from like an ice cream cone or drinking cold water, then you probably know how brutal sensitive teeth can be. Now, think for a second. Imagine tiny little nanobots like swimming inside of your teeth and plugging up whatever's causing that sensitivity. I know, sounds like science fiction, right? Well, this might be a 